Hello, I'm doing a book review, and the book I want to review is The Alienist by Caleb Carr. Now, The Alienist was published in 1994, and this is a work of historical fiction. Like, it's a fictional story, but apparently a lot of the stuff in this book, like about how New York City was at the time this book takes place, the book takes place in the late 19th century, in New York City, and apparently a lot of the stuff about how New York City was at this time is actually historically accurate, because Caleb Carr is also a historian. Now, Caleb Carr is actually the son of Lucien Carr, who was also a writer, and he was actually friends with writers like William S. Burroughs and Jack Kerouac, and he was actually involved in a murder case case in the 1940s. Like, Lucien Carr actually killed his former scoutmaster because apparently this man, from what I read up, was apparently trying to molest him or something, and that's why he killed this man, but, but Caleb Carr's father, Lucien Carr, did actually spend some time in jail after this. So, the fact that Caleb Carr's father actually murdered somebody could have been some of the inspiration for writing a book about a serial killer. Now, even though this is a fictional story, a lot of the characters in this book were actually real people. Like, Carr actually takes a lot of actual historical figures and makes them characters within this novel. Like, Theodore Roosevelt is actually one of the main characters of this book. Now, the plot of The Alienist is it's set in New York City in the year 1896, and it's narrated by a newspaper reporter named John Moore, who in the beginning of the story is called to this crime scene where a 13-year-old boy was found brutally murdered. The thing is, though, this 13-year-old boy was also a prostitute. Now, in the book, there is a doctor named Chrysler who is the title character of the novel, he is the alienist. Now, at the time this book takes place, the term alienist were used to refer to men who studied mental illness. Because at this time, people with mental illnesses were considered to be alienated from society. So, upon investigating the body of this murdered boy, Chrysler actually links this with the murders of two other children from a few years earlier, and Roosevelt, who is also there, because at the time this book takes place, Teddy Roosevelt was the police commissioner of New York City, and Roosevelt also notes that this is very similar to some other murders that have happened. But in the beginning, it becomes apparent that, with the exception of Roosevelt, most of the police department really doesn't care about this boy who was murdered because of the fact that he was a prostitute, and you also find out later in the story that he was also an immigrant, which also doesn't make the corrupt police department really care that much about him either. So, what happens is, in the story, Roosevelt ends up organizing this investigative team to investigate into these murders and try to catch this killer, and this team includes John Moore, Chrysler, these two brothers named Isaac and Lucas, who are both police detectives, and a woman named Sarah Howard, who was hired as a secretary for the police department but she desperately wants to be a police officer herself. But this was, of course, a time when women were unfortunately not viewed as equals by society, so her joining this investigative team is very controversial, even among the people within the team. But throughout the novel, this killer starts going after more child prostitutes, and there are also various people in positions of power, including the Catholic Church, 
who are trying to stop this investigation. Like, in the story, you realize that Chrysler is a very controversial man. He has a lot of ideas that these people in power feel like threaten society's status quo, so now they're trying to stop this investigation. So, in the book, the main characters not only have to deal with a serial killer, they also have to deal with these various different thug groups who are going after them because of their investigation. Now, I thought The Alienist was an excellent book. The book is extremely well written, and it has some really good characterization in it. Like, I loved all the main characters in this book, but I especially liked the friendship that you see between John Moore, Chrysler, and Theodore Roosevelt, because you realize that even before the events of this book, these three men were all great friends with each other, even though each one also has their differences as well. In this book, you also have the two brothers, Marcus and Lucas. I accidentally called one of them Isaac earlier in this review. That was actually a mistake, because their last name is Isaacson, so I kind of got confused there, but yeah, the two brothers, Marcus and Lucas, are two very likable characters, and they're actually really funny characters because, like, some of the dialogue between them is really funny because they're constantly, like, bickering back and forth between each other. I also really liked the character of Sarah because she's a character with a lot to prove. She's a woman in this male-dominated environment, and she's trying to prove that women can be just as competent as men, and she ends up proving that because throughout the whole story, she starts to prove that she's just as competent as any of the men on this investigative team, if not even more competent, and also this was a time when women were unfortunately not viewed as equals by society. This was over 20 years before women were even allowed to vote. So, I really liked how you saw this character really prove not just herself to these men, but also prove that women are just as capable as men. So, the characterization in the book is really well done. This book is also a really good historical novel. Like, this book really does put you in this time setting and gives you a real feel for what New York City was like at the time this book takes place. And one thing that I really liked about this book is it definitely plays around with genre a lot, because I would say the book is actually a couple of different genres all in one. It's a crime drama, it's a murder mystery, it's a historical thriller, it's a psychological horror story, and it's also kind of a political thriller as well. The reason I say it's a political thriller is is because, aside from the serial killer in the story, you also have all these political groups who are going after the main characters and even threatening their lives at certain points in the story to try to stop this investigation. The book is also very much a social commentary on society, particularly society back then, but to a certain extent, society even now, and one of the main themes of the book is how the upper class views the lower class, and this whole idea of the rich versus the poor. Like, in the story, with the exception of a select few police officers, most of the police department doesn't even want to investigate the murder of these child prostitutes because these were prostitutes, and their line of 
thinking is why should we even care if prostitutes are murdered or not, which obviously is a disgusting way of thinking, but of course that's how I'm sure a lot of people thought back then, and I'm sure there are people even today who think that way. Like, why should you even care if somebody who is lower on the social ladder gets killed when we're all human beings and we should all care about each other? There are even some members of the police department who feel that the murders of these prostitutes are actually setting some kind of example, which is another reason why some members of the police department are trying to stop this investigation. Also, throughout the book, you really do get the idea that this killer is somebody who is driven to do what he does by society to a certain extent, and you almost get the idea that he's a monster created by society, but it's almost like a Frankenstein's monster kind of scenario where society created this monster but does not want to accept responsibility for this killer. So, the book has a lot of commentary on the cruelty and hypocrisy of society. So yeah, The Alienist by Caleb Carr is an excellent book. It's an excellent historical novel and a really good crime drama slash murder mystery. And it's a really good psychological horror story as well. As well as a really good political thriller and social commentary on society. I highly recommend this book if you if you haven't read it yet. Now, Caleb Carr actually wrote a sequel to this book in 1997 called The Angel of Darkness, which I still haven't read yet, but I do own a copy of it, though. Now, there has been some talks of them doing a movie based on this book, and Caleb Carr has actually said that he would like either Anthony Hopkins or Sam Neill to play the character of Chrysler. Now, back in the 90s, I think Anthony Hopkins or Sam Neill would have been perfect as this character, but now I feel like both those actors are a little old now to be playing the character, who I'm pretty sure in the book is a relatively young man. But TNT is actually doing a miniseries based on this book, and the miniseries is actually going to be directed by the same guy who directed the first season of True Detective, which I'm really excited for because I loved the first season of True Detective, and I'm really interested to see how the director of that first season of True Detective would handle the material from this novel. And that same director was supposed to be doing another adaptation of Stephen King's It, but from what I heard, he apparently dropped out of that project which is a shame because I think he could have made a really good adaptation of that book as well. But yeah, that's my review on The Alienist by Caleb Carr, and bye.